In the Gospel of John, the disciple John talks about the I am statements of Jesus. In this video, we'll talk about the seventh statement, I am the true vine. Hello, I'm Kathy Bartow. We have in past videos talked about the other six. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let's talk about Jesus' statement, I am the true vine. Now, vines are mentioned about 188 times in the Old and New Testament. To better understand the significance of the vine in Jesus' time, let's go to the website BiblePlaces.com and click on Grapevines and Vineyards. And I quote, Fruitful and empty vines. Mentioned more than any other plant in the entire Bible, the grapevine was very important culturally and economically in biblical times. Because of its centrality in everyday life, it is often used symbolically in scripture. A fruitful vine was a symbol of obedient Israel. While wild grapes are an empty vine, spoke of Israel's disobedience. Cultivating the vine. This woody vine is only cultivated with effort and hard work. Isaiah chapter five verses one through eight records part of the process. Typically grown on a hill, a vineyard needed to be cleared of many stones, which are common in Israel. Only then could vines be planted. A wall or hedge built around the vineyard along with a watchtower, kept thieves at bay. The plant requires pruning in order to bear fruit. Uses of grapes and grape leaves. The grapevine can grow on the ground, on stakes or poles, or can be planted in an orchard and trained to climb trees. The sweet fruit with white flesh and green, red, or purple skins grows in clusters. The produce can be eaten fresh, dried for raisins, pressed for wine, or made into vinegar. Grape leaves are also used in some Middle Eastern recipes. Grapes in the Bible. The vine is listed in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 8, as one of the seven species in the good land that God was giving to the nation of Israel. It was a land where the grapes grew in large clusters as reported by the expedition of Hebrew spies sent into Canaan. The grape clusters were so large that they carried them on a stick between two men. This gift from God was meant to be enjoyed, and men were not to go to war until they had tasted of their own grape harvest, according to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 6. End of quote. Yes, vines and vineyards are very special. Listen to how Jesus describes himself in John chapter 15, verses one through five. I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch joined to me that does not bear fruit. He trims every branch that does bear fruit. Then it will bear even more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain joined to me just as I also remain joined to you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain joined to the vine. In the same way, you can't bear fruit unless you remain joined to me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain joined to me and I to you, you will bear a lot of fruit. You can't do anything without me. Jesus refers to himself as the true vine and his believers as branches connected to him. Jesus uses the vine and its branches to teach his believers that they draw life, grow, and bear fruit when they are connected to him. The branches must be connected to the vine to accomplish this. Spiritually, Jesus tells us that his believers are only able to fulfill their purpose in life when they are connected to Christ. For when we are connected to Christ and abide in him, only then can we be disciples of Christ and be able to endure life's challenges, such as illness, 
death of a loved one, loss of a job, financial problems, and so on. We learn that as long as we are connected to Jesus, we can grow spiritually and become more fruitful. The vine is a symbol for Israel. The greatest spiritual benefit of Israel is Jesus. Listen to these other scripture passages about the vine, about Jesus. Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. He answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be rooted up. Genesis chapter nine, verse 20. Noah began to be a man of the soil and he planted a vineyard. John chapter 15, verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. John chapter 15, verse six. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. And Colossians chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Your faith and love are based on the hope you have. What you hope for is stored up for you in heaven. You have already heard about it. You were told about it when the true message was given to you. I'm talking about the good news that has come to you. In the same way, the good news is bearing fruit. It is bearing fruit and growing all over the world. It has been doing that among you since the day you heard it. That is when you really understood God's grace. When we remain in Christ, we bear much fruit. Apart from him, we wither and die. Blessed be to God. Till next time, peace be with you.